Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of The Hot Seat, a wireless design and development interview series where we talk about the latest wireless technologies, components, and design issues for the wireless design engineering community. Today we are speaking with Mario Bocatius, who is the product manager for small signal and low power RF products at Freescale. During his career, Mario has held various positions in design, applications engineering, business development, and product management. He has been involved with the design of gallium arsenide and gallium nitrate power and transistors and amplifiers. Mario's work has been dedicated to performance improvement of Doherty power amplifiers for use in wireless communication systems. He holds a Diplom Ingenieur degree from the University of Applied Sciences Gietzen Freiburg in Germany and Master of Science degree from King's College, University of London in the UK. Mario has published more than a dozen technical articles, holds three patents, participates in panel discussions, and recently was the co-organizer of a hands-on workshop on Doherty power amplifier design at the International Microwave Symposium in Seattle. Today, Mario will be discussing Doherty amplifiers. Welcome, Mario, to the WDD hot seat. My first question for you is, what are the main components or specifications of the Doherty amplifiers? The Doherty power amplifier consists of two sub-amplifiers. The carrier amplifier, which is often also referred to as the main amplifier, and the peaking amplifier. In its most basic uh, implementation, the Doherty amplifier consists of two identical sub-amplifiers. Uh, in other words, they use the same uh, power transistors uh, on, on both sides, the main and the peaking amplifier. These are often pre-matched LDMOS transistors, such as those offered by Freescale. Uh, and they use identical input and output matching networks uh, which are typically printed on a PCB. Uh, moreover, the, Doherty amp the two sub-amplifiers in the Doherty amplifier are operated 90 degree out of phase. This is achieved uh, by a uh, 90 degree input power splitter such as a uh, hybrid splitter. Uh, of course, uh, the two signals have to be combined in phase again after they are uh, amplified and this is done by the use of a 90 degree transmission line at the output of the main amplifier. Uh, further, uh, the main amplifier is uh, biased in class B, uh, theoretically anyway. Uh, in practice we often choose a bias point in, in deep class AB. And the peaking amplifier is biased uh, in class C. Uh, when the signal level at the input of the Doherty amplifier is low, the peaking amplifier stays off and only the main amplifier is operated. And that's, uh, in the end, the secret sauce about the efficiency improvement of the Doherty amplifier. Um, the, uh, another important component of the Doherty amplifier is the Doherty combiner. This is uh, implemented also by another 90 degree transmission line which usually has the characteristic impedance of 50 ohm divided by square root uh, of 2. The function of this transmission line is to transform the 50 ohm load impedance uh, to 25 ohm at the Doherty node, uh, at the Doherty combining node which then is transformed by the 50 ohm transmission line that connects between the Doherty node and the main amplifier to 100 ohms at the main amplifier. Uh, the impedance level stays constant as long as the peaking amplifier stays off. And uh, in order to do that, uh, another important thing about Doherty amplifiers is that the peaking amplifier actually presents a very high impedance to this combining node. Now, uh, if you consider that the signal level increases at the input of the Doherty amplifier, the peaking amplifier uh, slowly starts to turn on. And while it uh, turns on, it starts to contribute power, but in addition, it also pulls the impedances at the combining node and uh, at the output of the main amplifier to 50 ohm. This effect is referred to uh, as uh, load modulation. Um, so one, one thing uh, to note, note is that when the load at the main amplifier is modulated, the, it, it is retuned from a highly efficient load to a high po power node. Uh, so another thing that is uh, quite important to understand in Doherty amplifiers is that the additional output power 
it can achieve uh, when the peaking amplifier is off is not only due to the peaking amplifier itself, but also due to the cha change load of the main amplifier. So overall, the Doherty amplifier is an excellent choice uh, for uh, power transistor or power amplifiers that need to transmit high peak to aver uh, average uh, ratio signals. However, it is not uh, very nonlinear itself. So designers often use uh, digital predistortion or RF predistortion methods in order to achieve the linearity requirements uh, that come with uh, from the system, but also from uh, controlling bodies such as the FCC. Can you discuss the advantages of asymmetric Doherty amplifiers and the ways in which they help create efficient cellular infrastructure? The, Dor the Doherty PA that we just discussed is composed of two identical sub-amplifiers. Hence, it's commonly referred to as a symmetric Doherty amplifier. Its theoretical efficiency peak is at 6 dP uh, output power back off. Uh, modern communications uh, systems, however, use signals with uh, very large peak to average ratios that typically end up somewhere in the 8 dB range after they have been crest factor reduced. Hence, the Doherty uh, or the amplifiers that are used to transmit these signals will have to be operated at least at 8 dB uh, back off. Uh, and the symmetric Doherty amplifier is not uh, the most efficient uh, at this state. Now, if you implement the Doherty amplifier differently, you can actually move the efficiency peak around. Uh, you, can, uh, you could either increase the size of the main amplifier as compared to the peaking amplifier. If you do that, your efficiency peak will uh, move to lower power back off levels. But if you increase the peaking amplifier as compared to the main amplifier, you can move the efficiency peak towards uh, uh, higher back off levels and uh, to get an optimum uh, peak to peak to main amplifier ratio typically people look at 1.5 to 2 times uh, larger peaking amplifiers compared uh, to the main amplifier uh, main amplifier now the asymmetric Doherty amplifier uh, that is implemented in the way I just described will have a higher efficiency at uh, the operating points of interest for wireless uh, base station. However, it uh, comes with a couple additional challenges. And the most obvious challenge is that the two sub-amplifiers are different, and therefore you have to design uh, two different sub-amplifiers and the development time will be much longer. Uh, moreover, these are two completely different uh, amplifiers that uh, vary independently. So any variation that may exist in uh, any of the two amplifiers uh, will be independent of the other amplifiers. That's different from a symmetric Doherty amplifier. Typically in a symmetric Doherty amplifiers all the components used to construct the amplifiers come from the same manufacturing lots as both amplifiers uh, are made at the same time. So inherently the variation in a symmetric Doherty amplifier much lower than in that uh, of an asymmetric Doherty amplifier. So if you uh, uh, go ahead and put an asymmetric Doherty amplifier in production, you will notice that a lot of the efficiency improvements that are possible in a, if you just build one, don't translate directly to production. And this has triggered base station manufacturers to greatly still put symmetric Doherty uh, amplifiers in production and uh, are not taking and they're not taking advantage of the inherent efficiency advantage an asymmetric Doherty amplifier uh, can bring. Now to overcome this limitation of the asymmetric Doherty power amplifier and to provide the industry with a pass to further reduce uh, the power consumption of cellular infrastructure equipment Freescale recently released its first advanced Doherty alignment module, or short ADAM, uh, which has been designed uh, to make the asymmetric Doherty amplifier mainstream. Can you explain the sophisticated technology behind the ADAM product and how it helps enhance the power efficiency while boosting performance across the entire cell cellular frequency band? So the uh, ADAM essentially has been designed, uh, as I mentioned, uh, to 
improve the performance of asymmetric Doherty amplifiers in general. And if you look at the issues uh, uh, that I just described, they can be boiled down to the fact that you have two sub amplifiers, which signals in the end have to be combined. And in order to combine those signals, they uh, have to be combined in phase and they have to be combined at the appropriate amplitude. Now, any variations, any independent variations these two sub-amplifiers will see will result, uh, will result in a non-optimum combination of the signals. So what is really needed in order to make uh, um, the asymmetric Doherty amplifier uh, shine to its fullest potential is uh, some sort of mechanism that allows you to control the amplitude and the phase at the output. Now, this is not uh, very, very easily implemented at the output itself, but if we had the ability to control the amplitude and the phase of the signals at the input of the amplifiers, this would tr directly translate uh, to the output. So Adam has been designed to control the amplitude and the phase at both the input of the main sub-amplifier and the peaking sub-amplifier so that the output uh, of the two amplifiers combines in phase and at the appropriate amplitude. Uh, moreover though, Adam uh, can not only be used to do this in production, it also can be used to do this out in the field when conditions changes, so, such as the temperature for example, or operating conditions such as operating voltage or operating frequencies. Uh, so it can be adjusted uh, dynamically while you're in the field as well. How would you say then the Atom product compares to the competition and what ways does it resolve the design challenges facing RF engineers um, that the competition does not? So uh, Freescale is actually the only company that offers a integrated solution. Uh, Atom comes with everything uh, starting from the power split, uh, the phase control, the amplitude control and it even has an integrated uh, a spy, which makes it uh, easy to use. In addition, uh, it has several other advantages over discrete implementations. A discrete implementation obviously requires a much more design side uh, at, uh, at the PA manufacturers. Um, uh, it also requires a control software, which uh, will be uh, available for Atom, uh, and uh, it usually requires much more a board space. Uh, on top of that, the typically discrete implementations are much less broadband and they're much less repeatable uh, than Atom. So on, on top of that, Freescale, at Freescale we're trying to make it easy for our customers to design Atom in. So when we uh, sample Atom, we're not only sampling the Atom chip itself, but we're sampling it with a whole uh, Atom evaluation kit, uh, which I have uh, one here. And within that kit, uh, we have a quick start guide that explains on how to install our control software on, on your PCB that will allow you to um, control Atom in your lab. We uh, also provide a controller board that has a Freescale microcontroller on it. And this controller board uh, uh, um, connects to the, the evaluation board that has the Atom chip right in the middle of it. Uh, and we provide all the cabling uh, as well in this evaluation kit. So it's very easily uh, integrated in, into uh, any uh, uh, PA manufacturer's uh, design. Is there anything else, Mario, that you would like to add to the discussion that you think is important for our viewers to understand with Doherty amplifiers or even the Atom product or any insight that you can provide us with um, Freescale and what we can expect from the company in the future? So uh, one thing I uh, forgot to mention actually is that a lot of this information is uh, also available available on the web so you can go look it up. Uh, we have a, a site just dedicated to Adam, it's freescale.com slash Adam uh, that you can find more information for, for Adam and you can also download uh, uh, or you can also request a kit and uh, in addition, there's, uh, there's videos uh, online on YouTube that explain on how to set up uh, the evaluation kit. Um, 
And you know, to, to your uh, second question on that, Freescale is the premier provider of RF power solutions for the wireless base station market. Uh, we have the world's largest portfolio of LDMOS transistors. Uh, our, our portfolio covers all popular frequency bands, essentially from 700 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz. And uh, uh, this is even extending in the future to, uh, to its higher and lower frequencies. Our portfolio cov uh, covers all kinds of power levels. So we, we service uh, starting from femtocells all the way up to macrocell uh, power amplifiers. Um, we have a very diverse portfolio. So we have uh, single ended products that uh, can be used uh, in, in Doherty amplifiers, but we also have products that actually integrate uh, the transistors uh, used in the main and the peaking amplifiers in one package. For that, we have two different types of um, uh, implementations. Uh, so one that uses identical for symmetric uh, Doherty amplifiers and one that uses uh, uh, different sizes of power transistors in the same package for asymmetric uh, amplifiers. Moreover, we have uh, the uh, largest uh, portfolio of driver amplifiers uh, for the wireless base station industry. And again, we have a wide variety of products ranging from uh, single-ended uh, over dual path to actually multi-stage ICs uh, where we integrate uh, a, a driver and a pre-driver uh, on the on one side and the same on the other side uh, to be used in, in Doherty amplifiers. Um, innovation is a key driver to our success so uh, another thing that we have brought to the market is the use of uh, plastic packages uh, in uh, the infrastructure market in, in particular. All the, pretty much all the drivers that I just talked about are already in plastic packages. And for the finals, uh, uh, a significant portion of our transistors uh, that cover uh, frequency bands below one gigahertz are already in plastic. And uh, we're working very aggressively uh, to move our uh, transistors that cover bands above one gigahertz also into plastic. Besides the cellular market, uh, we have a very high focus on adjacent markets uh, such as the industrial, medical and scientific market space. Uh, we offer competitive products uh, for broadcast and we also have a full portfolio of land mobile uh, products. And recently we announced that we also will uh, put a renewed focus on the aerospace and defense market. On top of the LDMOS uh, power transistors, we also have a high uh, performance portfolio of gallium arsenide based amplifiers. These range uh, from gain blocks uh, that can be used in pre-driver applications uh, over LNAs uh, to multi-stage uh, power amplifiers uh, with rated powers um, uh, of 1, 2 and 4 watts and, and those latter devices are perfectly suited uh, for the upcoming uh, picocell uh, market and we see a, see a lot of uh, traction uh, for those uh, devices out there. Uh, so, if you want to find out more about that, I encourage you to go to freescale.com slash RF and uh, you can uh, learn more about us there. Well, that was all the questions that I had for you today, Mario. I want to take this moment to thank you for the opportunity and joining us on WDD Satsi.